Okay, so tunnel drawing. Let's start with tunnel drawing. Uh, I'm going to use um, a sphere, right? Uh, again, as I said before, tonal drawing is concerned with um, light on form, right? Tonal drawing, light on form. Right? So, uh, structural drawing, structure and line, light and form, tone, right? See how many times, how many things we start, we start um, tacking to one, uh, um, one method, right? Okay, so let's draw now. Let's consider this first. I'm gonna show you a drawing that uh, uh, the, that uh, you, you can find in Leonardo's Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbook because he came up with his with his studies, right? So I got my sphere, right? I got my sphere in here, and then I imagine now the light coming down from here, right? From the heavens, right? I got the light in here. And um, so what happened in here, the light will hit. So this is the light source, right? Okay. So the light <clears throat> will hit the form um, at this point in here perpendicularly, right? And at this point in here is the point that is the closest to the light source and um, is the most perpendicular. And that typically is where we have the highlight, the white area, right? The highlight. So that's a highlight. As the light source in here kind of becomes a little more distant, right? And, and a little bit less perpendicular, Right? So it's, just, it's a, 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 an angle here, narrower or wider than 90 degrees is developing here, right? and so on, right, here. And then here it gets tangent, right? You get tangential to the form. So now at this point in here, I have another value, right? At this point, you have another value. And then at this point in here, I have the passage from the light mass and the shadow mass, right here. This point in here is the tangency zone, okay? So the tangency zone, um, <coughs> sorry. And the tangency zone is the point where I had the patch from the light mass to the shadow mass, right? So all this area here will be darker, shadow, right? But at the tangency zone, I will have an area that looks a little bit darker by contrast. And I'm gonna show you later on this idea of the contrast, the simultaneous contrast, right? So here now is the value, another value, right? Another value. So I would do this, put the value everywhere, and then gradually make it, skip down one step, make it a little bit darker, right? And then another step and make it a little bit darker. So now I have this passage, and then from brightest to gradually, gradually, gradually darker. At this point in here, I have the shadow mass, so that's gonna be the darkest spot. But what makes it more clear that I'm passing from the light mass to the shadow mass here is the tangency zone. And the tangency zone, I'm gonna have an area here which is a darker band, which I think is an optical phenomenon, right? this, right? And now, um,
And now imagine now I have here the plane, right? The plane is here, right? My tape, my, my spheres on the plane here on the table. The light come down from here so that this area here is going to be shadow, right? So the shadow is gonna be here. Cast shadow. So this is the pro the, the proper shadow of the form, and this is the the, the, the shadow that the, the the volume the sphere casts onto the table, right? But what happens in here? Typically, when I have a a, um, a surface like this, right, onto which the sphere is is positioned, the light coming down like this will bounce back onto the area of the um, sphere that is in the shadow and will create a slightly lighter area here past the core shadow or the tangency zone, right? So tangency zone is also called core shadow terminator. You just got to Pick one, you got so many names, but it's an area here between the the light mass and the shadow mass that is a little bit darker, right? Like this. So, so now this light coming from up here bounces on the table and then hits hits the the the, the shadow mass here, creating a reflected light area. Okay, so now <clears throat> this is how the light behaves on the form, right? If I look at the uh, at this at the cube also, then it's uh, I'm going to notice <clears throat> another <clears throat> phenomenon, and uh, in this case, I'm going to show you the um, um, uh, it, so let's let's draw a cube, right? Let's draw a cube. Start with the straight line. The corner closest to me from here i'm going to make it with parallel in axonometry with parallel lines not in perspective right i don't want it to be too let's leave the perspective for later on right so this is parallel to this this is parallel to this right um now <clears throat> this is parallel to this and is parallel to this, right? And then this, this, and this are also parallel, right? So I have my cube, right? And I'm saying, good, happy. Did a cube today, right? So now, imagine this. Imagine that the light, the light hits the form from here, right? Like this so or well, let's say here right let's see like this so this is going to be this is going to be the, the the whitest area right the light area this area here catches some light but not as much as that right because it's at an angle and this area here is behind so it doesn't catch any light so what i want to do i want to leave this white and i want to put a value all over this area here right so look how i render the value right this is it this is it the, 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 the tonal mark, right? And I'm gonna use another piece of paper before I start this, so you can follow me, uh, you can follow me when I do this, doing the right mark, right? So when I do the tonal mark, right? I want to have the pencil sharp, only sharp, right? And uh, you can use the pencil like this, like I showed you before. You start making lines as parallel as possible, right? One next to the other one. And uh, you want to blend them. You want to blend the lines, one with the other one, so that they create a homogeneous uh, area of value. It's homogeneous. I don't want to have lines that do this at this point, right? Because that's another type of thing, right? It either... Either um, you know how to use these, uh, like I showed you before with the hairy cylinder, or you're gonna make a mess with these. So don't don't do this for now. Do this. Try to maintain a regular 
pattern like this. And maybe before you start drawing, get a few pieces of paper and practice, and practice doing this type of mark, right? I would start doing straight lines and, uh, and then curved lines and parallel lines, etc., just to educate your hand. So I have a homogeneous, homogeneous uh, uh, area of value here, right? And if I want to make it darker, what I do, I just maybe see from this angle in here, I change slightly direction, right? I change slightly direction here, right? And now I have a, another area of value on top of the previous one, which makes it slightly darker. And I can kind of soften it up, uh, getting on one value, another value, and another value here, right? Until we can kind of get a gradation, right? A gradation that I can control as I like, right? So I'm gonna have this corner which is darker and then it gets lighter gradually like this. So now, um, if you if you don't if you cannot achieve this level of homogeneity, this is the problem, right? I'm gonna show you the problem. So imagine this: I have now my cylinder here obtained with structural lines, right? Here, right? And um, now I I've drawn my basic structure of the cylinder. Now I want to uh, render it tonally, right? So what I do, I start. Let me start from the outside and we see the effect that this has on the cylinder, right? As I go over it. When my tonal rendering is done properly, right? Imagine I'm going over here. I, uh, the, the tonal rendering becomes like a wash of watercolor. See that? I go over it and, uh, I still see it because the lines that I put in over here are not lines, are area of value, and they don't compete with these lines in here. But if over here I do that, right? I do this kind of mark in here, right? See how quickly I lose it, right? I lose it, I don't see it anymore. So now I don't have my structure drawn anymore and I don't know where to put my background value. See, this could be the background value, see? And then uh, maybe I'm gonna soften the edge a little bit more here. Background value here, right? I lose the line now, but I now have the, the form defined by aerial values rather than line. And in here I can gradually, gradually maybe kind of um, darken the values and achieve a sense of volume, right? Sense of volume. So. Let's go back to the sil to the cube, right? So in the cube, I have white, medium, dark. And what I'm doing is now I'm going to block in the value here, the, the, the lightest dark value, if you want, right? All over the place, here. I include also the, this is gonna be darker, but I want to prep it with this, with a overall value here, right? that um, now I can darken it right here. But see, my lines are not lines, are the tonal rendering that I showed you before, right? So now I have one, two, three. See that, this, this is not enough. I'm gonna push it darker, right? I wanna push it darker, and I can push it darker as much as you want. So if you notice this uh, surface is a little bit model, it's because of the cardboard here, it has a little bit of um, texture and, and uh, I'm picking it up. So later I'm going to put the smoother piece of cardboard in the back. So the, the surface you draw on is very important, right? Now you see one, two, three, but it still, it looks a little bit, and then I can imagine now, I can imagine now the, um, uh, like I'm from here, I can imagine now the uh, um, shadow mask right here. Sorry, the cast shadow, this is the cast shadow. The cast shadow is the one projected on the table by my object, right? By my cube. So 
always layering, right? Always layering. I am a little bit looser now with the mark. You see spaces in between. But then later I mend it. I block it in. Also, I don't want you to go spend too much time watching me rubbing, you know, uh, pencil on paper. Um, but eventually, see, we can we can we can smooth it fairly quickly, right? And obtain a sense of yet another value, right? But there's one thing that there's one thing that um, um, I want you to notice. It's um, see that one, two, three, four, right? Quickly because I know how to relate these uh, to each other and then uh, I can create an essential rendering of a cube hit by light. But there is a concept called simultaneous contrast, right? So what happened is this, if I have the light coming down from here, this all this area here is white, is lighter, right? But, but when I get uh, this area of, of, of light next to this area of, of shadow here, this area here, because of the contrast, this, the, the, the connected, the, the direct contrast with the, uh, this area of, of light, this will look darker, right? Here, right? This will look darker. And uh, and then gradually it will become lighter, right? Same thing in here, right? Because this is lighter than that, there is going to be also an area that appears to be a little bit darker, right? But the contrast, the difference is not as much as here because the contrast is higher. The contrast in between these two, because this is not as bright as that, is going to be a little less pronounced, right? And then, so now here we have, a, similarly here, um, this area here, because it's next to a dark area, this area will look lighter than here. So this area here is going to be darker, right? It's going to create like a little bit of a glow, right? A little bit of a glow. And the same thing here, right? The same thing in here. So now, um, so now let's see, this area here will look a little bit, because of that, darker, right? But not as much as this area here because uh, 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 the contrast is uh, is not as much. This is not as dark as that, right? Make sense? So basically, um, you end up with areas that are not area of value, are not uniform, right? And uh, now this area here, likewise, is not going to be flat white because the contrast. So this area here will appear lighter because they are next to darker areas, but this area here is a little bit darker, right? Now, think of this. Think if I include here the background here and make a dark background right here, then that area there is going to be also appearing a little bit lighter, and they're going to have an area here which is a little bit darker because it's distant from all this background area, and so on. If I have in here a, a brighter, whiter background, that is going to be a little bit darker. Make sense? So um, it's a contrast that you have between the various adjacent area that come in, con in, in contact that um, that will create this tonal variation in the various areas, right? So.